Okay, whether you have enough faith to be disappointed or not, the Boeing Starliner just got another delay. Basically, in an announcement on October 12th, NASA officials said the first manned test flight of Starliner has been delayed another month, until early April 2024. The reason for the change was not given. The target date for the first operational flight of Boeing has also been delayed to early 2024 from its prior schedule of summer 2024. NASA and Boeing previously said they were eyeing early March of 2024 as the date for Starliner's debut with astronauts, also known as the crew flight test, but this was a projected ship readiness date, not an actual launch date. NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams will take part in the CFT en route to and from the ISS. This means that SpaceX will complete up to 10 operational crew launches for NASA before Boeing even attempts its first, and potentially half a decade after SpaceX's initial crew flight, no less. Starliner suffered several problems on its first mission, called the Orbital Flight Test, shortly after launch in December of 2019, and didn't arrive at the ISS as planned. The successor mission, May of 2022's OFT-2, made it to the ISS and back to Earth. SpaceX's Crew-9 mission would then launch in August of 2024, shortly before Crew-8 returns to Earth. A 10th crew rotation mission is expected for early 2025, NASA officials said. It could either be SpaceX's Crew-10 mission or Starliner-1, Boeing's first operational crewed flight to the ISS. Boeing and NASA had really high hopes for the summer of 2024 for Starliner-1, but that target date has now been pushed back to allow time to review results from the CFT, including incorporation of anticipated learning, approvals of final certification products, and completion of readiness and certification reviews ahead of that, referring to Starliner-1's mission. Who else? is getting tired of waiting. Did you know that this company had big plans for its new space capsule even before it won a $4.2 billion contract in 2014 to develop a spacecraft for NASA to fly astronauts to the International Space Station? If space were indeed going to open to the masses as many at the time were predicting, Boeing wanted to position itself as the premier spacecraft provider, the way it had with commercial airliners. Almost 10 years have passed and during this time, those dreams have flown away. Boeing's spacecraft remains grounded with not a single individual having journeyed to space aboard it, and the prospect of private space flight remains elusive. The company has shouldered a staggering $1.4 billion in cost overruns, and NASA's safety advisors have pressed for an independent evaluation of the entire program. SpaceX, in stark contrast, was awarded a contract around the same time as Boeing, but for nearly 40% less funding. It has successfully conducted eight missions to the International Space Station on behalf of NASA, and has also facilitated private astronaut missions. So what went wrong? How could one of the world's most legendary aerospace companies fall from grace so spectacularly against the, at the time, underdog of the industry, Elon Musk's SpaceX? How is it still on the ground when when its competitor has been launching astronauts to space since 2020. One top NASA official called Boeing's inability to get its CST-100 Starliner capsule into regular use an existential challenge. Some NASA officials think one cause may be the way the commercial crew program was set up, a fixed price contract after years of cost plus ones that allowed contractors to pass to NASA any excess expenses they encountered in developing the project. That commercial model is not exactly the way Boeing was structured, NASA Deputy Administrator Pam Melroy said in an interview. So they've had to work through that and make sure that they're resourcing it. And you know, it's tough. You've got to put a lot of skin in the game. That's not the way they've been structured from the beginning. But NASA, which desperately wants Boeing to start flying so that it doesn't have to rely solely on SpaceX, is hesitant 
hesitant to criticize Boeing. They've been great partners, Melroy said. They're committed. They recognize it's existential. John Shannon, who in December was appointed vice president of Boeing Exploration Systems, which has oversight of Starliner and the company's space programs, said in an interview that despite the enormous costs, the company will not abandon the program, though he acknowledged that the $1.4 billion Boeing has had to eat on the program has been a major hurdle. For a government contract like that, you just never see that kind of investment, he said. And trying to take the very top-level view of it, it's important, I think, to the country to have an American capability to fly crew. SpaceX is doing that now. We'll be the second one. But when asked whether Boeing plans to continue with the program long-term, he suggested that that was in doubt. It's a great question, and I wish I had the answer to it right now, he said. The concern, he continued, is that the private market for space travel is uncertain, and plans for commercial space stations that would provide a need for regular launches, which have yet to materialize, even though NASA has started to invest in those, and Boeing is a partner with Blue Origin and Sierra Space on one. He added, probably the biggest challenge I have is defining how do I make this into a positive business case, given the market conditions as we see them right now. SpaceX, however, appears to have made a case that flying successfully can be good business. Since the original NASA contract, it's won another, another five more missions for the International Space Station, valued at more than $1.4 billion. It has also flown an all-private citizen trip to orbit that was financed by billionaire entrepreneur Jared Isaacman, who has chartered three more flights. SpaceX has also flown civilians to the ISS on missions chartered by Axiom, a Houston-based company. So, in the end, the market conditions don't really matter, because many of Boeing's problems are self-inflicted. Over the years, the program has faced repeated delays and technical challenges that have ranged from severe software errors to corroded valves. Earlier this year, Boeing delayed yet again what had been a hoped-for launch in July when it discovered problems with the design of the capsule's parachute system and found that tape inside the craft was flammable. Now, the flight isn't scheduled until sometime next year at the earliest. For Boeing, getting Starliner off the ground is now about more than flying. It is about whether the company can be relied upon to deliver on programs that are vital to the national interest. The Starliner program had problems from the start. In an effort to consolidate some of its major aerospace programs, Boeing in 2015 created a new division to oversee their development from concept to reality. Under the leadership of a senior executive, it brought together engineers from across the company, from commercial aviation, defense and space, to more effectively apply engineering expertise, development program best practices, and program management and integration from across Boeing to our most important development activities, the company's said in a statement at the time. Suddenly, the KC-46 aerial refueling tanker it was building for the Pentagon was lumped alongside the 777X commercial airplane, as well as the Space Launch System rocket and Starliner spacecraft it was developing for NASA. But instead of driving efficiencies, it created problems, according to industry officials familiar with the matter who were not authorized to speak publicly. The commercial airplanes designed to roll off the production line with some frequency had little in common with military aircraft designed for combat and even less with rockets and spacecraft, which would be built at a far slower cadence. Starliner has since encountered consecutive failures. Well, NASA purposefully awarded two contracts in case one provider faltered, and the value of that strategy is now evident. Initially, Boeing was considered the favorite to dominate even though Elon Musk's upstart company was already delivering cargo and supplies to the space station on its Falcon 9 rocket and Dragon spacecraft. But flying astronauts was an altogether more difficult task, one more suited, many thought, for a company like Boeing with a long heritage in space that dated to the Apollo era. There is pride to it, and Boeing has a long history in human spaceflight programs. If they were to throw in the towel on Starliner, they would be walking away from that history and basically ceding it to the new space companies. Todd Harrison, a non-resident senior associate at the Center for Strategic and 
and International Studies said. And I've got to say, his words are starting to become prophecy. In any case, that's all for today, folks. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.